PS caseworkers should be double checking and making sure that these foster families have proper child care and not leaving older teens at home to babysit foster children. It was December 2015. Police were called out to a home where they found six-year-old Destiny King in critical condition. Destiny was one of four foster children living in that home. Officers quickly realized Destiny was the victim of physical abuse. Destiny was rushed to the children's hospital where she would die five days later from her injuries. Trigger warning, the injury report. The medical examiner ruled her death a homicide after he discovered she had suffered multiple injuries including a lacerated liver, severe bruising all over her body, especially her pelvic area. Little Destiny had been brutally R-worded, an actual shoe print on her private area. There were bite marks all over her back, bruising across her face, bleeding on her brain. I can't go any further with the injuries. So the police began to interview the family. So they learned that Destiny was one of four foster children living in the home. Their surviving foster children aged 7 and 9 told police that 14-year-old Anthony Evans had been physically abusing them and that Antonio threatened to hurt them even further if they told anyone what he'd been doing to them. Both of those foster children also suffered severe bruising on their faces and across their bodies, and they too were possibly essayed by Antonio. Antonio was being fostered by the daughter of Destiny's foster mother at the time of the killing. But basically, this family took in a bunch of foster kids, including 14-year-old Antonio Evans who also had an abusive past himself. So these foster parents were leaving all their foster kids at home alone. From ages 6, 7, 9, and 14, they were leaving the oldest foster child, Antonio, in charge of the younger foster children. The 14-year-old Antonio would babysit all day while the foster parents were at work. And everyone knows that is a big no-no. You never leave foster children at home alone together. You have no idea what kind of trauma these children have experienced in their past. It's just a fact. Victims of abuse typically abuse other victims. And that's exactly what Antonio was doing with these children. The surviving foster children also told police that Antonio had punched, kicked, slapped, choked, and whipped his victims each day while their foster parents were gone to work, with Destiny vomiting and passing out after three days of this abuse. I want to know one thing. How did these foster parents not notice that Destiny was vomiting and passing out for three days straight? So Destiny's remaining siblings were removed from that foster home and placed in another foster home after they were treated for their injuries. So 15-year-old Antonio was charged with murder and he was tried as an adult. He pled guilty and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. But what about the foster parents? They neglected these children. I can't find any information on them. They should have been charged with child abuse and neglect as well. Especially when I find out six-year-old Destiny was vomiting and passing out for three days straight before they seek medical attention. This foster family was neglecting her that much, but CPS should have kept a better eye on these children while in foster care. Speaking at her funeral, Destiny's father, Trevin King, said, I just miss her so much. We just had fun all the time, and she was so happy and wonderful. I love her, and I miss her. A family friend named Sharon said she was so full of life and we had so much fun. I just wanted to say how much we were going to miss her as part of the family and for a short time that we got to be with her. I feel so bad for families like this because CPS removes your children from your home and claim they're placing them in a more safer home, right? And then you find out your child has been left alone with another older child, beaten, R-worded, and unalived. The predator isn't always some creepy man in a white van. And it's a known fact, most children are essayed by their own family members. And their abusers are typically older siblings or cousins. Sometimes our children are at risk right here under our noses in our own homes, our churches, and our schools. Heck, even the school buses aren't safe. 